Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with a, a very brief uh, post shift update today. People wanted me to post today. So uh, I'm working this weekend in the emergency department Labor Day weekend. Been busy. Uh, I am tired, but I, I did promise a couple of people I would post. Uh, if you notice, there are fewer chairs back behind me because Dr. Cruz and I have been sneaking them out into the hallway every time we walked by our office last night. So we're almost out of chairs here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look at yesterday's video. I'm Dr. Galvin, board certified emergency medicine doctor in North Carolina, who has been doing COVID virus updates for a while. Um, very briefly today, I'm not even gonna talk about numbers or anything like that. I'll post again tomorrow. But um, I did want to say I had a little epiphany um, after having a conversation with a patient we were admitting for COVID who uh, insisted on arguing with me that masks don't work. And I said, I'm not the one that's being admitted to the hospital with a severe case of COVID, you are. Um, but apparently he uh, refuses to wear masks and that, that's his choice, but he's also the one being admitted. Um, but I actually realized that I think we actually have some proof that masks and social distancing work. And um, instead of looking at studies that, you know, look at, at, uh, at different groups. Um, I think we've got some very practical evidence out there right now. And I think we just have to look at our college campuses. What do we know about college students is that they not only are not, for the most part, social distancing, but they're actually aggressively not doing it. So we're talking about fraternity parties, we're talking about kids getting together in large groups. Um, and what are we seeing across the country where this behavior is happening? We're seeing explosions of cases. The University of Alabama, I think, is over a thousand, maybe over twelve hundred cases. They only went back to school a couple of weeks ago. So, the good news is that these are low-risk people. So, if these college students are getting the virus, then they are very unlikely to have a problem with the virus in terms of it killing them. Um, but if you substitute college student for somebody who's in one of the risk groups, then the risk is great. Um, people have asked me about what I thought about colleges sending kids home. I think it's a terrible idea. L let them stay there, let them give it to each other because you know what? It's better that they're immune. Um, they're at low risk. If there's already an outbreak at school, if you send those kids home, guess what? You take a thousand infected kids and you send them to a thousand different ho households where they can expose relatives and, and um, people who may be at risk, but that's a whole other discussion. But I think it's a very um, apt sort of demonstration of what happens if we just throw away all the social distancing and the masking. We're gonna have explosions of cases. Now, if we do that in the general population and we combine that with you know the, the fall coming up, where there's a big increase in hospital visits, people go back inside, they're gonna be in closer proximity. That's why you're starting to hear these predictions of 400,000 deaths by January 1st. Well, if we don't start following, really following this stuff, um, we combine that with our, our natural sort of progression of diseases and what happens in the wintertime, we're looking at a very, you know, potentially very, very uh, dangerous winter. Um, you know, I think everybody's suffering from COVID fatigue at this point. They want it to be over with. And, you know, and when you, you get there, what happens is, you, you know, you're, you're less careful. Um, and we really need to guard against that because we could be facing some real problems come this, this winter. Uh, I'm going to stop it there. I'm exhausted. It was a long night. Um, I did, some people have asked me about the mask I'm wearing. This is called... Um, it's called an Envo mask, and it's basically an N95 mask with a gel thing. And, you know, um, I think I had complained about mask wearing early on. And now that everybody's wearing masks, I think you all can probably sympathize um, what wearing a mask, uh, especially an N95 mask, for 10 hours straight feels like. So this is more comfortable. It has replaceable N95 type material here as a filter. Um, it's pretty comfortable. I, it's, I can talk through it reasonably. Um, do I trust this one 100%? It's an N95 mask. Honestly, if I'm going into a patient's room that I know has COVID or I strongly suspect it, I actually don't wear this. I wear a regular N95 mask, my cloth mask over it, and a shield. Um, 
but for most things, I think this is pretty good. Um, I, I just, I don't know why I do that for, for those really severe cases, but um, I have had this thing pop off once or twice, like the, the cover over the filter, but it's called an Envo mask. You can order them. They are very comfortable. And if you've got to wear a mask for extended periods of time, like I do, um, it, it, it's a worthwhile investment. Anyway, I'm going to stop it there. I will be back tomorrow um, with another uh, follow-up and we'll talk uh, about a few other things, but just wanted to, to vent a little bit on what's going to happen if people decide not to social distance and not wear masks, then we'll make the rest of the country like college campuses. Everybody, wash your hands, wear your masks, take care of yourselves, take care of your families, take care of those around you. I will talk to you soon. Stay safe. Good night.